Well, I've just come up through the woods after doing the birch, and I come across this lump of ash tree on the floor. So I wanted to show you something. First off, Fagus, which is the Latin, ash tree, gorgeous tree, very revered in Nordic beliefs. This is the tree of life, okay? So a very, very reverent tree amongst the Nordics, indigenous people. Right, beauty of ash tree is, um, you can actually eat the young leaves and the uh, seed pods that you get off it, they use medicinally for quite a number of things. But it's a great burning wood, is ash. The thing you've got to watch with ash, especially if you're cutting big stuff, is she doesn't take no prisoners. So I'm talking about if you use a chainsaw particularly. Um, I've worked with ash a lot. I've worked up in canopies of ash. And the thing with an ash tree is if you don't put a good front cut in, then when you go to cut the back, she can do a thing called planking, which basically, instead of her following where you've taken the front cut out, instead of her necessarily doing that, if you don't put enough of a front cut in, and then you go to touch the back, quite often she'll do a thing called planking, and she literally will split right up the centre of the trunk. So if that's the two sections of the trunk, okay, my two hands, two sections of the trunk, what can happen is, if you don't put enough of a front cut in, when you put the back cut in, once the weight becomes too much up on the top of the canopy, she can do that for quite a height of the trunk. And if you're stood in the vicinity, um, it has been uh, a common cause of accidents amongst people that don't know what they're doing. But if you're bushcraft, that kind of thing, you shouldn't really be cutting ash that size. Now this is perfect. It's seasoned. It's an easy bark to recognise. It's kind of a very pale brown um, and very distinctive. The, the thing with an ash tree is, unlike um, sycamores and some of the other trees, she has quite an open canopy to her, even in full leaf, so the wind can get through her. And she's very resilient to wind. But another thing that's very, 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 very common on ash tree, and it pretty much shows its evidence of the death knell of the tree, or at least the limb of the tree, is, I'll bring this in closer and see if you can see, but you get these black fungi growing on them, these things here. See? Now that one's just popped open. Now, if I was in a bushcraft situation, or if I was down here starting a fire or living down here, which I did do, I lived down here for two years. Amongst the trees, absolutely gorgeous. This is great for fire lighting. You can powder it down, or you can put it down into small lumps. Okay? So I don't know whether you can see amongst the gloves. Right. And the other thing, what a lot of people used to do back in the old days, is you get some of this hot, and if you're traveling from one site to another, then what you can do is actually you get it hot and you put it in a little carrying container, a little tin can or something like that. Put some holes in the top so that some air can get into it. And this thing will smolder away for quite some time. And it, it's almost like your tinderbox. You can actually get to your other fire. And if you've done it right, you've got something that's already smoldering and a little bit of hot stuff there. Ash can be burnt green, not in your chimneys, preferably, but outdoors, ash burns really well green. You've got to get a decent fire going first, but once you put it on there, hot fire, it'll burn gorgeous, it gives off a lot of heat. So ash, fantastic piece of wood to work with, beautiful tree, treat her with respect, and she'll give you what you want, okay? So, well, I'll give you a little lesson. There you go. Now I'll go to work.